Before you start this tutorial, make sure you satisfy the following assumptions. So assumption number one, you want to make sure you already apply for the educational GitHub account for your lab work. And that means you are able to create a private repository for your ECS 1021 workspace. And you also have clone to your computer desktop by using either the command line or the GitHub desktop uh, application. If you have doubts about any of these uh, three assumptions, you can refer to the tutorial series about how you can apply and manipulate the GitHub account. Uh, make sure you do that before you start the current tutorial series. Okay, so this is your online uh, GitHub account and uh, also make sure you also run the command line, for example, to actually clone your GitHub. I assume you have done that already. So now on my desktop, I already have this particular folder called ECS1021 lab workspace, for example, that is cloned from my GitHub account, educational one. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this as a workspace for my Eclipse and I'll do all the developments for the rest of the tutorial series from this folder. Okay, so now what I want you to do, so let's minimize the command line and also minimize the web browser. We don't need that uh, anymore. Okay, so now I want you to launch the Eclipse that I also assume you have already installed. Okay, launch Eclipse over here, and uh, you may have to change the default workspace over here. So make sure you browse, for example, you can say browse, and then you can choose your desktop and then under EECS1021 lab workspace and choose that. Uh, if you follow the previous tutorial series, we, we already have uh, a Java project called Hello World, but you don't have to worry about it for now. We're gonna create something from scratch. Okay, so we're gonna open this particular workspace for the rest of the, of the tutorial and make sure this path is, uh, is exactly over there, okay? And then you will say launch, okay? It will take uh, maybe a little bit longer for the very first time, but let's wait for that. Okay, it's done. So let's maximize the window over here. I'll show you some other tips about using Eclipse in later tutorial video. But for the current one, let's focus on the very basics to get you started. Okay, if you see the workbench, you can just click on play over here uh, so to get started. Otherwise, you can read the tips by your, on your own. Okay, click on workbench over here. So now, currently it is simply just empty. Okay, so let's create a new project from scratch. So you can think about every time if you want to do something new for a particular task or for, for a particular lab, you can simply just create a single project. So a single project may contain as many uh, packages as you like. Package in Java is like folder. And then under each package, you can have as many Java classes as you like. Java classes are like files. Okay, let's uh, illustrate the ideas very quickly. Okay, so now you can think about, let me just add a new page over here to illustrate the three concept I just talked about. Okay, so now you can think about the top level is your workspace. Okay, like the folder I just uh, created on my, I just cloned from my GitHub accounts. And then for example, it's the EECS 1021 uh, lab workspace. Okay, that's the one I just uh, cloned. Okay, under the workspace, once we uh, open this workspace by using Eclipse, you can create as many Java projects as you like. Okay, so we have Java projects. And under each Java project, we got as many packages as you like. If you simply don't want to create any packages, Eclipse will still create a default package for you. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about package a little bit later. Okay, also you got packages. And this is very similar to the idea about folder, okay, in your normal file system, okay? Under each package, you can have as many Java classes as you like. Java class, class one, class two, class three, as you will see in my illustration a little bit later in the tutorial video. Okay, so these are similar to file. Okay, so these are the different levels of concept you want to keep in mind, this is the very basic you want to keep in mind. Okay, we got workspace, we got projects, we got package, and we got Java class. Of course, under Java, each Java class, you may have to, uh, have to declare different programming construct, which we'll go through uh, throughout the tutorial series. Okay, so now let's now go back to our Eclipse over here, and then we'll create a new project. Okay, the way to do it is by go to File, and go to New, and then Java Projects. You want to make sure you choose Java Projects. 
Again, if you don't see it, you can simply go to other over here, and then you can search for, for example, Java projects, and then you will also see this option here. Okay, it depends on which version of Eclipse you're using, but you can always go to other and search for that. This option will always work. Okay, click on next. And now we have to choose a name of the projects. So here is the naming convention for uh, Java projects. If you have uh, different words, you cannot separate it, uh, separate it by space. They have to be combined together without any spaces, okay? So it's so-called compound word. So what we can do is, for example, uh, now we are doing lab zero part one. For example, we can say lab zero part one over here. Okay, so now this is uh, satisfying the naming convention. You wouldn't say like a lab zero and then part one. So this is simply not legal because you cannot have white spaces between the uh, project name. Okay, and then you have to always capitalize the very first for each word and uh, combine them together. It's called the compound word. Okay, lab zero and part one. Okay, that's what we have. And you don't have to worry about other stuff. Keep them as default. And you will say finish over here. So this is our project over here. If you simply go into your desktop and then have a look at here, now we have exactly this folder for the projects. And again, you have uh, one folder called bin and you have one folder called source. The bin simply store the Java bytecode, which you don't have to worry ever. Okay, just don't worry about it. And for the source, this is going to, uh, at the moment, it's simply just empty. It's going to contain all the Java classes you're going to store over here. Each Java class, as I said before, is going to be a file. And by the way, it's really important to note, for each Java class is going to be a file, some name of the extension dot Java. Okay, I will illustrate it to you a little bit later. Okay, it's just gonna be a file with a special extension. So you'll be recognized by Eclipse. Okay, let's go back here. And then let's now go to create a new class. Okay, let's create our very first class. Okay, for the very first class, I just want to show you how you can create a main method and try to really produce some outputs to the console and then try to understand the word called sequential composition. Okay, also notice this, how the semicolons can be used for sequential composition. Okay, the very first one. Okay, what I will do is go to the source, uh, click on the source folder here, right click and then go for new and then go for uh, class, okay? And then over here, you have to give a name for the class. Again, the naming convention for Java class is like the naming convention for the projects. You uh, you have to start with cap uh, every word in a compound word has to be capitalized, okay, with no spaces, okay? For example, over here, we can say simply uh, simple outputs, for example, right? And now you have two options over here. If you simply just want to do something to the console, the console simply means it's actually going to be output panel on the Eclipse, which for most of the time in the lab session, we actually focus on the console for the Eclipse, okay? So now the uh, we can either choose this uh, box over here, which means it is going to generate a particular method for you, which is called the main, okay? As far as the uh, lab session is concerned for now, because you're only beginning to learn about Java. Think about the main method is going to be the main ent uh, entrance point for uh, the Java runtime to actually execute your code, okay? So now what we will do is you can either choose this or don't choose it, okay? Let's say we choose it, okay? And then you can say finish. Okay, so what we got over here, and this seems to be a little bit too small. So let me also show you at the same time how you can adjust the front size for your Java uh, file, okay? So what you can do is go to Eclipse and go to Preferences, okay? So now you can type in the search bar simply font, okay? So you can see under General, under Appearance, under Colors and Fonts, click on that, and then open Java over here, okay? Let me just make it a little bit bigger for you. So under Java over here, go to Java editor text font, okay? So over here you can choose whatever font uh, face or whatever and uh, whatever font size you like. For example, I can simply double click on that and then I'll simply make it uh, for you to read. Let's say 18, okay? Once I choose that, uh, I can say apply. You can see at the background it, it's changed, okay? Let me do one more thing, which is also necessary. Can you also go under debug 
and also choose for console font. So this console is the word I just mentioned. This is going to be the main output channel for us to see the effects for our Java programs. Of course, we also will see how the programming effects can be visualized on the hardware. But the main point about this course being a programming course is to see the programming effects on the console. Okay, so now let's double click on that. And now we let's be consistent. We also choose 18. Okay, so two fonts to change. One is about a Java editor and the other one is about a console. Okay, apply and then you can say apply and close. Okay, we haven't seen the console yet, but we'll see that in just a moment. Okay, so now, so we have one class over here and we also have a main method. Okay, let me document this for you. Okay, so up to now, you can see that we have something called class. We got something called public static void and also what's this really right so i would say all these up to now is something that for the moment you can just take it for granted so it will always be given or you can simply generate it like what i just showed you in eclipse you don't have to memorize them okay all you need to know is for this particular main method over here i'll document it for you every time you want to document your java class this is what you can do you can just say double forward slash and whatever you write over here is not going to be read by the computer it's so-called a comments you can write okay this is only for documentation purpose okay i would say the main method is the entry point of runtime execution which means when you want to execute your program uh the first line of the main method which we are just about to fill in in line number six so it's going to execute line by line from top to down, okay? And then, so that's the, uh, the entry point of uh, runtime execution, okay? So now, for now, you will always start from the first line of the main method like this, okay? So now, how do we write some program to begin with? Okay, so now the easiest way is, let's say, of course, you can read some input from the user or you can generate some output to the user. We'll talk about how you can read input from the user in the later uh, video. But now, let's see how we can output so for the output, this is a line you can also take it for granted, okay? But you don't have to memorize, it will always be given to you as a hint, okay? So you're gonna say system dot, and it's going to uh, give you a menu of choice. You can system the out dot print line, okay? I would say system the out dot print line, you will use this for just so many times, you know, throughout the course. So eventually you might just uh, memorize it uh, naturally. You don't have to memorize on purpose, but eventually you'll get used to it. Okay, so every time when you got system out that print line, that means you want to print something to the console. Okay, we will see what the console look like in just a moment. It's completely integrated with the Eclipse. Okay, so now system out that print line, and we want to print something over here, right? We'll talk about what you can really put inside this particular inside the pr print line. So whatever you can see that there's an opening uh, parenthesis and there's also a closing parenthesis. Between these, uh, this pair of parentheses, you can put some stuff over there. And whatever you put inside there, you can be, it can be printed out to the console, okay? The easiest way is to put a string and we'll talk about string in more details a little bit later. So now I can simply say, hello, uh, let's say hello, EECS1021. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen. Okay, now how do we execute the program? Of course, you can also, uh, okay, one thing to note, it is really important that it's a very common mistake. Sometimes you might accidentally delete any of the curly brackets. They should always be a pair, okay? You can see that this particular opening curly brackets matches this one here in line number eight. And this particular opening uh, curly brackets also matches this closing one in line number seven, okay? And also you can see this opening parenthesis also matches uh, the closing parenthesis over here, right? Anytime it's a very common syntax error. If you, for example, if you accidentally uh, missed this one here, it's gonna tell you, you have an error. You can see on the problems panel over here, you have an error. And then it will tell you that you have some uh, syntax error. Uh, e e uh, Eclipse even suggests how you may fix your program. You simply say insert the closing parentheses to complete expression. That is one of the common mistakes. 
Okay, let me undo this. Okay, another one could be maybe accidentally you deleted this particular closing brackets. You can see that that's also uh, breaking the uh, symmetry, right? You can see that we have the opening curly brackets, but we don't have the closing one. So that's also an issue. Okay, so this is uh, number one you have to remember always when you write your Java class. Okay, so now let's see how. So so far we are the, we are just uh, we are. Let me just show you this. So, so far, we are only in the compilation stage. Compilation stage of the program, which means we are just writing the program. Okay, we are only writing the program. We haven't really seen exactly how the program, uh, when executed, how would, it, how would it behave, okay? That's something called the execution stage. Or sometimes people just call it runtime. So these are actually of two very important stage that you have to distinguish between. One is called compilation, which means why I'm writing the code, and also when you execute the code, if they actually can compile. Okay. So now uh, we'll, we'll actually uh, reinforce these concept, you know, throughout the course. So let's just uh, make sure you uh, at least you can recognize these terms and uh, get an intuition about how the, uh, what they really mean. Okay, so now we are still in compilation. Let's now execute it. Okay, so what you can do, so you can, uh, one principle you have to remember. Okay, let me write it down for you. Okay, let me see over here. You can all, only execute a Java class with the main method with the main method it is really important okay so whenever you want to see the effects of certain java classes you want to make sure it does have the main method which we did create for the main method okay it's really important as a principle if i simply created one class but without this particular main method it would it cannot be executed okay so now since it has a main method let's execute it so you can simply right click on this particular class you would say run as Java application. So what we will see is you can see there's something called a console over here. And then you simply show you this is the effects of executing your Java code that I just compiled over here, right? I compile the program that is valid and then I run it as a Java application. And this is the effects I see in the console, right? This is really the workflow you have to get used to throughout the course. Always, you try to compile your program over here, okay, to your satisfaction, make sure it's valid, and then you can execute the program over here as Java application, and whatever effect it might be, it will show over here in the console, okay? And the moment we simply have, hello, EECS 1021. Okay, it's only one line. So now, what I want to do is, I want to say, I want to create a slightly different program rather than printing just one line over here i want to say hello eecs 1021 and after that i want to say this is now winter 2019 okay so now where should i put that line obviously i have two possible choices okay i have choice number one i can either put this is winter this is now winter uh 2019 before the line i just put or i can put this line over here after that to say this is now winter 2019. So which option should I choose? Option number one or option number two? Okay, I can tell you that it should be option number two. Okay, let's see. Okay, so now we can simply just type everything, every time you want to type a new line, system the L dot print line. Okay, you can say now is winter 2019. Okay, this is one version over here, let's see. And then, so once you actually execute a particular Java class already, Eclipse will actually remember that. So now you can simply just move your mouse over the play button over here. There was a run sem uh, simple output. Can you see that? Okay, run simple output. You can see the mouse if you uh, move the mouse over. So you can see simple output is exactly this class over here. If you say run, it's going to execute the main method. So I can click on that. So now you can see that Hello, EECS 1021, and now is winter 2019. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Now I have a question for you. What if, 
I moved. This line over here, rather than after, I moved it before. Do you think? So now the program is actually okay. Okay. Now what if I simply just execute a uh, program again? Are we going to get the same runtime behavior? Yes or no? The answer is no. But why? Okay, let's verify that indeed. Let's experiment to make sure we can really observe the reality that the programming, uh, the program behavior is going to change. And then I will explain some important concept to you. Okay, so now what I will do is I will simply just re execute the program. And then I will simply say execute. So you can see that it's a uh, different behavior now. Now we will say now is winter 2019 and hello EECS 1021. Okay, it's basically the reverse order. So why are we getting a different uh, outputs at the runtime? Okay, this has something to do with something called sequential composition, which I'm gonna explain now. Okay, so now one thing, one more thing to notice, there is a semicolon over here at the end of the uh, uh, this line over here. There's also a semicolon over here at the end of this line. What if I got rid of it? Okay, you can see that if I got rid of it, pretty much like how I got rid of the uh, closing curly brackets. Now, I want you to pay very careful attention to this because this will influence how you perform your, in your future lab test. Okay, so now as soon as I did that, so there are three uh, places where indicated there are some errors in your code, so it cannot be compiled. Number one, you can see around this place over here, there's some red underline over here, right? If you move your mouse over, it tells you syntax error. Okay, it also tells you how you can fix it. Okay, place number one. Place number two, right to the uh, right around line number seven, there's a cross mark over here, which is also tells you the same syntax error. Okay, that's indicator number two. Indicator number three, you can see that the tab over here for this particular class also give you a red and uh, also give you a red uh, cross over here. It also tells you some, there's something wrong with this particular class, but where exactly? It tells you it is this line. And then where exactly in this line? It is exactly over here. Okay, so you can see that the, every time you see anything that's red, either red cross or red underline in Eclipse, that means your program has some errors. And your you as a programmer is totally are totally responsible for any errors you produced at the compile time. Okay, so anytime you see the red cross or red underline, you should really pause your developments for the Java code immediately and then fix it before there's no red underline or red, uh, no red cross over here, okay? In your future lab test, we will have a stringent requirements for you because we really want you to become a good programmer. If you submit any code that has some error, for example, like a red cross on your file, you'll receive very low marks, if not zero, okay? So that's something I want to make it very clear to you about the expectation for this course. We really want you to become a good programmer, competent programmer, especially. Okay, so now let me fix this error here. So I put a semicolon. Uh, I'll put a semicolon at the end. And then, so now you can see all the errors uh, has gone away. So that means uh, now I'm okay, I'm fine. Okay, so now after the semicolon, let me explain something to you very quickly. Okay, so now let me switch to the next page over here. <laughs> Let's now talk about some concept over here. So basically we talk about the main method over here is the entry point for execution. So this is a term that we'll keep mentioning as well in the class It's something called sequential composition of programming statements. So if you look at, only look at this frame, it simply means we're going to put a sequence of programming statements. We're gonna put one programming statements after another and what uh, what, would, what would be the type of programming statements we have to learn in this course? Quite many, actually. So now the only programming statement we have seen is the print statements. That's the simplest one you can have. It's a print statements, okay? So what I would do is I will simply add it here. The first one we just learned is the print statements. Okay, later video, we're gonna learn about how you can do assignments Okay, how you can do if then else, conditional statements, and also how you can do loops for iterative statements. So these uh, three are the main building blocks for any, uh, once you learn about these three particular uh, statements, you can write very powerful and expressive programs, but we'll do, do uh, one bit by one bit, 
Okay, so only focus on print statement for this current video. So now we talk about basically uh, the difference between uh, compile time and also between the runtime. So at a compile time, which means you're writing a program, you should always separate each statement by a semicolon, right? For example, you can see that after this particular print statement over here, we have a semicolon. And then after this second print statement there, we also follow that by a print, uh, semicolon, okay? So overall, abstractly speaking, you can think about for your particular program, all your program will look something like this, okay? So basically you have some main method, okay, over here, some main method here, and then opening curly brackets, closing curly brackets, right? And now you may have as many lines as you like. So some line over here, second line, third line, fourth line, okay? As many lines as you like. And now at the runtime, how exactly is Java uh, execution machine going to run your program, okay? Here is the principle, okay? The principle is very straightforward and intuitive. So from top to bottom, and one line is executed after another, okay? Which means overall it's going to starting from the first line over here, execute this line first, the first line. At the end of that, we're going to go to the second line and then execute it, okay? At the end of that, we're going to execute the next line and so on. Okay, we're gonna go from one line after another from top to bottom. That's the so-called sequential execution of your program, okay? So that is really important for you to uh, bear this in mind. Okay, so at the compiler time, we do semicolon to separate between uh, statements, okay? At a runtime, we're going to execute one line after another, okay? Like that in this order, okay? This is from top to bottom. It's really important for you to understand this principle here. It's the very basic. Okay, after this, we're going to, uh, let's see. So in this tutorial video, we show you uh, quite a bit of stuff. We show you how you can create a new project, how you can create a new class with the main method. And the main method is the entry point of execution for your runtime execution. And then we show you where you uh, you can how to do the sequential composition of the print statements. Each print statement is going to correspond to a line to the console over here, okay? You have a console over here, and then you can also rearrange the order of the uh, statement so it will be printed differently, simply because at the runtime, it's going to be from top to bottom and then one line after another, okay? That's a principle you want to get used to before you move on to the next video.